Good morning, church. I pray that you had a blessed Easter Sunday and are enjoying this Easter season. Uh, that is, well, Easter is not just today. Everybody thinks it's a day, but Easter is actually 50 days long. So we celebrate the resurrection uh, for quite some time here. And truth be told, we celebrate the resurrection every single day of our lives because it is that which we are living into. Today we are going to do morning prayer. Um, it begins on page 77. It's the season of Easter, and um, I always omit the confession of sin during the season of Easter. So um, after that, we'll just roll on in. To, after this opening sentence, we'll just roll on in into the uh, invitatory and the Psalter. And it's that wonderful beginning line. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. On page 79, Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. This morning we will say the Pascha Nostrum, Christ our Passover, on page 83. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin, once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Our psalm this morning is Psalm number um, 16, verses 8 through 11. And it can be found, Psalm 16 begins on page 599, uh, but verse 8 is on page 600 page 600, and we'll say verses 8 through 11. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life, in your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 2, verse 14, and then 22b through 32. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the multitude. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of powers, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will be shaken, not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, 
for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to that lesson is Canticle 19, found on page 94, the Song of the Redeemed, and we'll say it together. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord? and sing the praises of your name. For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 9 through 15. Jesus met Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priest everything that had happened. After the priest had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jews to this day. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Galilee. I heard that word, and when he said, um, when Jesus said uh, to the Marys, um, tell my brothers to go to Galilee, there they will see me. When I heard those words, I remembered something, um, or a, a brief video that our presiding bishop, Michael Ramsey, put together uh, several years ago when he was uh, consecrated. And so this morning I wanted to share that with you because I think it so much speaks to Galilee, but it also speaks to the Easter season. It speaks to where we are during this very strange time in the world and what it is that you and I as a Christian people are supposed to be doing. So I give to you this morning uh, for a, a brief message, uh, presiding bishop, Michael Curry. God came among us in the person of Jesus of Nazareth to show us the way. He came to show us the way to life, the way to love. He came to show us the way beyond what often can be the nightmares of our own devisings and into the dream of God's intending. That's why when Jesus called his first followers, he did it with the simple words, follow me. Follow me, he said, and I will make you fish for people. Follow me and love will show you how to become more than you ever dreamed you could be. Follow me and I will help you change the world from the nightmare it often is into the dream that God intends. Jesus came and started a movement and we, the Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement. Near the end of Matthew's Gospel, 
the story of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Mary Magdalene and some of the women go to the tomb to anoint his body. When they get there, they find that the tomb is empty, the stone has been rolled away, and there is no body there. Then they see and hear an angel who says to them, this Jesus of Nazareth whom you seek, he is not here. He has been raised as he said he would be, and he has now gone ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. It is in Galilee that the risen Lord will be found and seen, for he has gone ahead of us. Galilee, which is a way of talking about the world. Galilee in the streets of the city. Galilee in our rural communities. Galilee in our hospitals. Galilee in our office places. Galilee where God's children live and dwell. There in Galilee you will meet the living Christ for he has already gone ahead of you. A few years ago, I was in a coffee shop in Raleigh, North Carolina, just a few blocks away from our diocesan house there. While in line, I started a conversation with a gentleman who turned out to be a Mennonite pastor. He had been sent to Raleigh to organize a church in the community on the streets without walls. As we were talking over our coffee, he said something to me that I have not forgotten. He said the Mennonite community asked him to do this because they believed that in this environment in which we live, the church can no longer wait for its congregation to come to it. The church must go where the congregation is. Now is our time to go, to go into the world to share the good news of God in Jesus Christ to go into the world and help to be agents and instruments of God's reconciliation, to go into the world and let the world know that there is a God who loves us, a God who will not let us go, and that that love can set us all free. This is the Jesus Movement. and We are the Episcopal Church, the Episcopal branch of Jesus' movement in this world. God bless you and keep the faith. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who celebrate with all the Paschal Feast 
may be found worthy to attain everlasting joys through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll say together the last collect at the bottom of page 100. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your own prayers and intercessions. Together we'll say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. I pray to y'all that the Easter Bunny was good to you. I pray y'all that the Easter Bunny and the good Lord bring us deliverance from this uh, current uh, trials and pandemic. And I pray that um, you all are remaining safe. Um, it sounds like you need to keep staying home, so stay at home. Um, but it does sound like we've just about got this thing licked. And I look forward to being able to see you all in church again very soon. I'm, I'm really praying, and I, and I ask you to join with me. I pray, that, um, I pray that we're back in church and that we celebrate the day of Pentecost together because that is going to be a glorious celebration. Have a blessed Monday. I'll see you soon. Back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Bye now.